The moon is a harsh mistress. It has a surface covered in sharp, abrasive dust particles from meteorite impacts, constantly battered by solar radiation and devoid of liquid water. Enter Intuitive Machines, a company forged to conquer these very challenges, which is kind of their whole quota. Recently, with the help of SpaceX, the company successfully sent their lander to explore the moon. What are the difficulties that lie ahead, and what will this lander achieve? Let's find out on Wednesday, February 26th, at 7.16 p.m. Eastern Time, SpaceX's Falcon 9 launched from Launch Complex 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, sending the intuitive machine's goddess on a trajectory toward lunar transfer orbit. Her name is Athena, a Nova Sea lunar lander developed by Intuitive Machines for NASA's CLPS program. She features a tall, hexagonal, cylindrical design supported by six landing legs. Athena is capable of carrying 100 to 130 kilograms of payload to the lunar surface and is equipped with solar panels that generate 200 watts of power. Her gimbaled VR900 main engine uses liquid methane and oxygen as propellants, pressurized by helium gas, generating 3,100 newtons of thrust. For attitude control, Athena relies on a helium-powered reaction control system. The lander's photovoltaic system includes three solar panels, one on the top deck and two on the body, providing a maximum of 200 watts of power during the lunar day, which lasts about 14 Earth days. A 25-amp-hour battery supplies energy to a 28 VDC bus, ensuring that Athena has power even when generation falls short of consumption. Athena was named after the Greek goddess, known as the divine counselor to Odysseus, the latter being the namesake of Intuitive Machine's first Nova Sea lander. 44 minutes after liftoff, Athena established a stable attitude, began solar charging, and re-established radio communication with the company's Mission Operations Center in Houston. The lander is in excellent health and is now preparing for a series of planned main engine firings to refine her trajectory ahead of the lunar orbit insertion, scheduled for March 3rd. Intuitive Machines CEO Steve Altimus said, Athena joining a historic wave of lunar landers on their way to the moon is an extraordinary moment. While the most vital part of this mission lies ahead, we believe this is a signal that lunar services are rapidly advancing alongside civil and commercial intent to establish a foothold on the moon to reach further into the solar system. Yesterday, the company announced that flight controllers had confirmed that Athena had completed the lunar orbit insertion with enough accuracy to forego the IM-2 mission's optional lunar correction maneuver. Athena continues to be in excellent health, completing lunar orbits every two hours waiting for the sun to rise on her intended South Pole region landing site, Mons Mouton. Athena's next planned maneuver is descent orbit insertion, which is designed to lower her orbit to make a landing attempt at 1132 on March 6th. Although Athena is the latest lunar lander to depart, its use of cryogenic fuel means it will reach the moon relatively quickly. If everything proceeds as planned, including additional engine burns to adjust her approach, enter lunar orbit and refine her trajectory, Athena will descend to the lunar surface as soon as March 6th. The lander's destination is Mont Mouton, a plateau near the lunar south pole. Mont Mouton is the tallest mountain on the moon to have been officially named. Its base-to-peak height measures 6 kilometers, according to altimetry data from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Situated between the craters Noble and Malapert, it lies within six degrees of the lunar south pole on the moon's near side. This region is of particular interest due to the presence of permanently shadowed regions, which may act as cold traps for water, as well as areas of extended solar illumination nearby. Compared to previous landing sites, this is the closest we've ever landed to the moon's south pole. Nikki Fox, Associate Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate, stated that Mons Mouton also provides Athena with what's known as the Goldilocks Zone for Sunlight. Okiyam, he said, though many areas of the lunar south pole are permanently in shadow, the precise locations where water ice may remain perpetually frozen, 
Mont Mouton offers enough sunlight to power a roughly 10-day mission while maintaining a clear view to Earth to allow communication with the spacecraft. Despite its advantages, safely reaching this destination will be a challenge. The areas near the moon's south pole are filled with impact craters, making it difficult to find a flat, even surface suitable for landing. To address this, the company upgraded the software and hardware, including the landing legs, to enhance precision and control during the lunar lander's descent and landing. Now, landing success is just the beginning. The real work comes afterward. On the moon's surface, Athena will deploy a drill called Trident, regolith and ice drill for exploring new terrain, to penetrate up to one meter deep. The goal is to collect regolith and ice samples from various depths, preserving stratigraphic information as it drills. Samples collected by Trident will undergo analysis using a mass spectrometer called MSOLO, which stands for Mass Spectrometer for Observing Lunar Operations. MSOLO will monitor the release of lunar volatiles during missions that involve drilling operations at the lunar poles. Although Athena cannot move once its six foot pads are deployed on the lunar surface, the lander is equipped with three vehicles specifically designed to explore the surrounding area. The first is Intuitive Machines Micro Nova Hopper, named GRACE, in honor of the late software engineering pioneer, Grace Murray Hopper. This small robotic hopper, aboard IM-2, can carry up to 10 kilograms of scientific payloads and expand the exploration footprint up to 25 kilometers from the initial landing site. The Micronova is designed to hop into and out of permanently shadowed regions, where it will attempt to detect ice before hopping back out of the crater and transmitting data back to Earth. A four-wheeled microwave-sized rover developed by Lunar Outpost will also deploy from Athena. Known as the Lunar Outpost MAPP, Mobile Autonomous Prospecting Platform, Rover, it is designed for extraterrestrial and extreme environments. Weighing 10 kilograms and capable of reaching a top speed of 10 centimeters per second, the Rover will carry our payloads, along with several others, and travel several kilometers from the landing site. To operate in the harsh environment of the moon, Engineers at Lunar Outpost have developed innovative solutions to combat the extreme temperature fluctuations the rover will face. The MAP rover also features a robust dynamic suspension system designed to help it navigate the lunar surface, where ridges and rocks can be large, sometimes up to half the size of the rover. This suspension system ensures that all four wheels remain in contact with the lunar surface simultaneously allowing the rover to generate maximum torque while overcoming obstacles. What's truly special, and what I really love about this rover, is that it has its own robot minion. The robot is called AstroAnt, which stands for Miniature Robotic Diagnostics and Service. It was inspired by science fiction, drawing on the concept of robot swarms working in symbiosis with spacecraft to perform diagnostic and repair tasks. The Astroants form a miniature robotic swarm designed for inspections and diagnostic tasks on the external surfaces of spacecraft, rovers, and landers. Each robot has a modular design, allowing its sensor payloads to be customized for various inspection missions. The data collected by the robots can then be used to monitor the operations of the spacecraft, rovers, and landers. However, for this mission, instead of a swarm, there's only one robot, just for testing purposes. The robot will operate on the top surface of the MAP-1 rover, equipped with a thermopyl on its underside to take contactless temperature measurements of the MAP-1 rover's radiator. With mobility in the moon's gravity, the robot can measure temperatures from various positions on the radiator, assisting in monitoring the performance of the rover's thermal system, which is one of its most critical components. The Astroants won't be the only mini rover on this mission. A Japanese company, Diamond, will also deploy its rover, Yaoki, from Athena to join the lunar exploration efforts. With a size not much larger than the Astroants, Yaoki will assist in the mission's groundbreaking exploration of the moon. For connectivity, Nokia's Lunar Surface Communication System, 
will set up a 4G LTE network to link Athena with its rovers and hopper, enabling seamless data transfer and control. Meanwhile, the lander will transmit scientific data and imagery, including relays through the first physical data center beyond Earth, Freedom, a device from Lone Star Data Holdings. The IM2 mission was a crucial milestone, providing valuable data about the moon, while also serving as Intuitive Machine's effort to improve upon the setbacks of their previous failed mission. Yes, this isn't the company's first lunar lander mission. That distinction goes to IM1. The Intuitive Machine's one mission objective was to place a Nova Sea lander at Crater Malapert, a near the south pole of the moon. The lander, Odysseus, carried six NASA-developed payloads, along with several additional payloads from commercial and educational partners. After implementing a last-minute software patch to the lander's altitude monitoring systems, Odysseus began its landing sequence at 2311 UTC on February 22nd, touching down near Malapert A, an area identified as containing water ice. Controllers confirmed they received faint communications from the lander. Initially, it was believed the lander had landed in a fully vertical orientation, based on outdated telemetry. However, it was later determined that the lander had landed at a 30-degree angle. However, it was later determined that the lander had landed at a 30-degree angle. Steve Altimus, chief executive of Intuitive Machines, said, We had some very high-level mission objectives to touch down softly on the surface of the moon, softly and safely, and return scientific data to our customers. Both of those objectives are met. So in our minds, this is an unqualified success. NASA confirmed it received data from all five of its active payloads on the IM-1 mission, with some operating during the transit to the moon and others providing data after landing. A sixth payload, a laser retroreflector, will be tested in the coming months. One non-NASA payload that may have failed is EagleCam, a student-built camera designed to be ejected from the lander and capture images of it. Due to changes in the navigation software, EagleCam was not deployed during descent as initially planned. However, Altimus reported that EagleCam was eventually deployed on February 28, landing about 4 meters away from the lander. Of course, in this mission, they will not aim for a half-hearted success. Besides, with all the payloads that IM-2 carries, the stakes are much higher. However, I don't think it will be a problem. The IM-1 mission has provided intuitive machines with more than enough experience and valuable data to successfully land on the moon. The moon was already within their grasp. All they had to do was reach out and take it.